There are several drugs in this chapter that we've previously reviewed in earlier chapters in CNS. For example, the first part of our table here looks at cocaine and amphetamines. These are drugs that we have previously discussed. This table does a very nice job of reviewing their properties. We've looked at the mechanism for cocaine, blocking the reuptake of norepinephrine, but it can also block the reuptake of dopamine, importantly, as well. Whereas amphetamines can cause the release of neurotransmitters, especially norepinephrine, but can also, to some extent, block its reuptake as well. The effects of both of these drugs are going to be very stimulant-like, and their side effects can manifest in many ways, including as arrhythmias. Withdrawal symptoms from these stimulants is going to be very much depression-like, so you're going to get a severe depression possibly upon withdrawal. Here we review some CNS depressants that we've previously covered. Benzodiazepines, barbiturates, and ethanol all work through GABA. We've discussed the specifics of the mechanisms, whether it's benzodiazepines that can potentiate GABA by increasing the frequency of chloride channel opening, or barbiturates, which can increase the duration of chloride channel opening. These drugs, by working through GABA, have a CNS depressant effect that is dose-dependent. Their toxicity can manifest as respiratory depression. Flumazenil is a very important antidote for benzodiazepines, but not for barbiturates or ethanol, because this drug cannot reverse the actions of those drugs which have a separate binding site. Withdrawal from a CNS depressant is going to look very stimulant-like, very sympathetic-like, in fact, involves features such as anxiety and agitation. We previously reviewed the properties of opioids. Drugs like morphine or heroin or methadone, there are perhaps many different mechanisms involved, but we discussed both the presynaptic and the postsynaptic effects of opioids, especially as they related to mu receptors to inhibit pain transmission or the release of pain transmitters. The effects of opioids were also reviewed. On overdose, watch out for pinpoint pupils and depressed respiration. The antidote is naloxone, short-acting drug that blocks the mu receptor. The withdrawal symptoms from opioids, since they are CNS depressants, withdrawal is going to look very stimulant-like, including things like sweating and restlessness. Towards the bottom of this table, we have the hallucinogens. That would include marijuana and various other drugs which have a hallucinogenic property. When it comes to marijuana, that's right, marijuana, over a billion served. Only if you get to use that picture. We think about the actions of marijuana. It works through cannabinoid receptors. That would be CB1 and CB2 receptors. Later in our lectures, we're going to discuss a drug called dronabinol, which can be used as an antiemetic because of its effective agonist effects on cannabinoid type 1 receptors. Symptoms of marijuana use? Certainly you can see things like the red eyes, the red conjunctiva, besides the fact that you kind of get the munchies and go through the drive through more often than normal. But marijuana, a drug which of course has become legal in many states these days and is being debated uh, quite heavily in many others. When you think about hallucinogens, oftentimes people refer to these as club drugs, drugs like LSD or PCP or even ketamine. These drugs all have in common that they can have a serotonin effect, a hallucinogenic effect. So certainly you can see these drugs abused as well. At the bottom of this table, we have some miscellaneous abused drugs. Make sure and focus on the first two, which are PCP and ketamine. Both drugs are going to have a similar mechanism of action by blocking glutamate receptors. PCP, in fact, can show up on your exam and recognize that the patient taking PCP, they're going to feel super strong. They're going to punch through windows and it's going to take multiple people, for example, to hold them down. They can experience a horizontal and vertical nystagmus. I call that eye paranoia. Their eyes are darting back and forth and up and down. You know that both PCP and ketamine, though, they're weak bases. Can you apply some concepts we learned back in general principles to how you might manage their overdose? How do you get rid of a weak base? That's right. You can acidify the urine. 
urinary acidification can be used to facilitate the elimination of drugs like PCP.